What's up guys? Welcome to Differential Equations. In this lesson, we're going to talk about separation of variables. It is one of the most fundamental techniques that is being used in solving differential equations. Recall that in, in our last lesson, we talked about that there is no one-size-fits-all technique or solution that would solve a differential equation. Rather, there are methods. There are many methods in solving DEs. And as I said earlier, separation of variables in, is one of the most fundamental being used in solving DEs. But before we start, let us first dive in into our gospel thought. Our scripture for today comes from Proverbs 4, verse 23. It says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. We're encouraged to guard our heart above all else. That means that we should make it a priority. We should make guarding our heart important. Every day, we take time and effort to guard our body. If you ride a bike, we put on a helmet. If we cross a street, we make sure that no cars are coming. We spend a lot of effort to make sure our body stays safe. Now, when it comes to our heart, many times we throw caution to the wind. We date whoever we feel like, paying no attention to what they believe or who they are. In the process, our heart gets trampled on in relationships. Now, challenge yourself to begin living differently. Choose to put some effort into guarding your heart. Don't just date any person that comes your way. Be selective and take any necessary precautions to guard your heart. As a silence, let us pray. I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of Thee. St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Let's first define... What do we mean, mathematically, what do we mean by separation of variables? Now, here's what we mean by that. If the right-hand side of the equation is expressed as follows, dy over dx is equal to a function that contains x and y. This function can be expressed as a function, another function, let's call it g of x, that depends on x times a function p of y that depends only on y, then the differential equation is called separable. In other words, if we can separate, pika na ay ang puti sa color, then the function given us is separable. Konting side note, konting kaalaman, a procedure for solving separable equations was actually discovered implicitly by Gottfried Leibniz in 1691. Now, the explicit technique called separation of variables was formalized by John Bernoulli in 1694, about three years later. Okay? Now, in other words, a first-order equation is separable if it can be written in the form as seen below. Yeah. This we can segregate, we can uh, segregate and or combine all uh, functions related to x expressed as g of x and all functions expressed in y as p of y. For example, the example in letter A, in the figure A, or the equation A, dy over dx is equal to 2x plus xy over y squared plus 1 is separable. Why? Because we can factor out x here. We can actually factor out x here and have 2x or rather x and sorry you can actually have here 2x or factor out x you're going to have x and then 2 plus y okay and this can be now separated and combined with y and x's how so well we can multiply y squared plus 1 sorry, y squared plus 1 to dy and x and 2 plus y dx, right? 
Now, this is a term involving y, so this should be on the dy side. We can do that by dividing both equations by 2 plus y. And so, we're going to have y squared plus 1 all over 2 plus y is equal to, or dx equals x dx. So as you can see, we have separated all the functions related to y on one side. I'm sorry, this should be y. And all x's on the other side. Kasama no kanyang derivative with respect to x. In that case, this is then separable. Alright. Now, in this case, this is not separable because of x and y. This polynomial here. Because no matter what we do, we cannot separate the two. Wow. No. Solid. Like, stick together sila. No. We cannot separate the two. We cannot put x with dx and y with dy. Okay. In that case, we will have another technique for it. Alright. So, informally speaking, one solves separable equations by performing the separation and then integrating each side. So basically, two parts lang. Ganun lang kadali ang technique na ito. First is separate and then integrate. Now, a bit formally, no? A bit formally uh, discussing this mathematically, <clears throat> we can actually solve the equation dy over dx with g of x in green and p of y in orange by multiplying dx here, this dx here, and by h of y is equal to 1 over p of y. So we can express p of y here but as, uh, I'm sorry, the inverse of it, 1 over p of y as h of y. So in other words, if you are going to combine, put it here, p of y with dy and dx with g of x, we can represent h of y as 1 over p of y is equal to g of x dx. So in this way, we have separated you know, all the functions of x with respect to the derivative of x and all the functions of y with uh, the derivative of y. After that, then we integrate both sides. What happens next? Integrating both sides gives us h of y is equal to g of x plus c. Okay, this is a very important parameter. Where we have merged the two constants of integration into a single symbol of c. Now, the last equation gives implicit solution to the differential equation. Okay, now let us not forget plus c here. This is a very important um, uh, parameter. This is what we call the arbitrary constant. No? And this represents even yung arbitrary constant here. Kasi we integrated here, di ba, sa h of y dy. So if we integrated here, magkakaroon siya ng plus c dapat. Let's call that c1. And then dito, magkakaroon siya ng plus c2 then. Actually, c here is c2 minus c1. We simply, um, for convenience, express our c as a we, uh, we uh, for convenience, so we expressed our arbitrary constants generated from this side and generated from this side no, as a single C. Now, to better appreciate it, no, let us go to our first problem. Okay. So, solve the equation dy over dx dy over dx is equal to x plus y, sorry, x minus y over y squared. Let's do that. Again, we're asked to find for the solution. Okay. So our equation is dy over dx equals x minus 5 over y squared. The first step is to separate, no? 
our variables so we need to put all our y's on one side and all our x's on one side so we'll be able to get dy y squared no? and then x minus 5 dx okay now the next step is of course to integrate so integrating we have y squared dy equals integral of x minus 5 dx. Okay, let's perform that here. So this is y squared over 2 equals x squared over 2, or rather this is y cubed over 3 by power rule, naalala pa from calculus, x squared over 2 minus 5x plus, huwag kakalimutan, very important, c. Okay, plus c. So simplifying, we can multiply 3 to the whole equation. And we're going to get y cubed equals 1.5 x squared minus 15 x plus 3c. Now, this 3c, again, represents the whole arbitrary constants. Okay? Arbitrary constant meaning that any value of c would make the whole function a valid antiderivative. Okay? This means that the existence of a single solution implies the existence of infinitely many solutions. Now, there is no particular reason to prefer one over the other, so we simply indicate the entire family of solution by the magical plus C. Okay? So we can actually um, uh, do that for convenience sake, we can represent that as let k be equal to 3c. Or in some books, they simply just put it simply c. In our case, ang gagamitin natin is c. So, we're going to have y u equals 1.5. x squared minus 15x plus c. Again, this c represents all the family of solutions. Kahit pa meron siyang 3 times sa kanya. Okay? Simplifying further, we can express it in y. y equals the cube root of this whole function. Oops, sorry. 15x plus c. And then, cube root. So, here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our solution for our d. So what can we notice? This is an expression in y. This is what we call an um, explicit solution. You know? Now it would really vary from, from one expression to the other as we will see in the next meeting. Or rather in the next examples. Okay. So let's move on to the next example.
Yeah, so example number two. So we have here dy over dx plus 7x squared plus 13x over x minus 1 and x squared plus 4. We're again asked to find the solution. So we have dy over dx. It can easily be seen that this is separable, right? dy over dx is equal to x squared plus 13x uh, over x minus 1, x squared plus 4. Well, aside from yun yung topic natin, um, it can easily be seen that uh, the x's can be put on one side and the y's can be put on one side. So first, of course, the first step is always to first separate. So let's separate that. Let's put all the y's on y, one end and x on x's on one end. Kasi yung mga x nilalagay na yan sa kabila. At yung mga y, no, all your y's should be on one side. Yan. So we have 7 x squared plus 13x all over x minus 1, x squared plus 4, dx. Okay. Of course, the next step is to, yes, integrate. Okay, so integrating, we have dy integral of 7x squared plus 13x all over x minus 1 x squared plus 4 dx. Alright. Now, what can we notice about our um, functions here. This one, this is easy, no? Say why na to? Sure yun. But this one, no? There are many techniques in solving, uh, or there are many integration techniques that can be used in solving this one. There is what we call the U substitution, trigonometric substitution or identities. We also have um, uh, power factor decomposition. Uh, partial fraction, <laughs> what? Partial fraction decomposition, integration by parts, no? among other techniques that can be used for integration. So, <clears throat> by looking at it, obviously, by doing U substitution, it is not possible, no? Kasi, um, if we're going to let U to be X squared plus 4, we have to have 2X on the numerator for the DU to be possible, right? But we have here an x squared. x minus 1 as u is not possible as well. Kasi naman, meron kang 13x here as well as x squared. So u substitution is not possible. How about trigonometric substitution? Not possible as well. Because wala ka namang trigonometric identity here. Or um, wala kang of similar form that can be used here. Integration by parts, hindi din. Kasi you have here more than... Uh, well, pwede naman siya sa more than one term, but obviously, you cannot uh, pick and choose here because of the denominator, the fraction here. So the most obvious is, that we, the most obvious technique we can use is the partial fraction decomposition, PFD. The partial fraction decomposition. We're in, if we have, in this technique, if we have an, a function expressed as, a, well, fraction, and it cannot be simply integrated, the easy thing is to decompose it. 
decompose it. Okay. Partial fraction decomposition. Now, how are we going to do that? Still recall from your algebra that for an expression such as this, no, for an expression such as a plus o, a sub x plus b, yung ating denominator, in other words, this part, we're going to have a term of, in the partial fraction decomposition as a over ax plus b. Pagka naman quadratic yung equation, we have ax squared plus bx plus c, we can have ax plus b over ax squared plus bx plus c. Again, I'm just running this through to recall, for you to recall, because I am expecting that you have already a working knowledge of this. Now, what if our linear denominator is raised to a power, a degree, called k? Then, it would repeat, no? Yung ating decomposition would repeat depending on the power of k. If, say, k is equal to 3, then a sub 1, ax plus b, plus a sub 2, ax plus b squared, plus a sub 3, ax plus b cubed. So, the uh, factor here will repeat depending on the power of k. How many times it will be repeated will depend on the power of k. So, 1, 2, and then 3 if k is equal to 3. Now, how about if a quadratic denominator is also raised to k, then a combination of the two uh, demonstrated um, uh, terms in power factor decomposition would then be employed. How so? We have a sub 1x plus b. This is uh, our form for the simple quadratic. But if it is raised to k, then the denominator will repeat until it reaches k. So for example, if we have ax squared plus bx plus c raised to 3, then we're going to have a sub 1x plus b sub 1 over ax squared plus bx plus c raised to 1 yan. And then a sub 2, x plus b sub 2 over ax squared plus bx plus c raised to 2. And then pagdating sa 3, obviously, a sub 3x plus b sub 3 over ax squared plus bx plus c raised to 3, and so on and so forth. So repeating and the power niya, uh, is also repeating. Now in some cases, we might have to, for a combination of the two, then we have to change our variables. We can do it a, b, c, d, e, f until such. The important thing is that we solve for those coefficients. Okay? So based on what we have here, we can easily deduce that this function, our integral, we have um, of um, 7x squared plus 13x all over x minus 1, x squared plus 4, has a denominator that has a combination of this function, and then this function. Okay? In other words, maaari tayong magkaroon ng decomposition as a all over x minus 1 plus b x plus c all over sorry all over x squared plus 4. Yeah. Okay. Notice that x sub 1 is this one, and x squared plus 4 is this one. So a, b, and then c. Okay. What's next? The next thing is that we look for the least common denominator. Okay, the least common denominator of the whole function. So obviously, the least common denominator, which we will be multiplying to both equations, would be this denominator. So our LCD and 
น้อยเองเนาะอย่าง so our least common denominator would be um, x minus one and x squared plus four okay Yeah. So what are we going to do with this? We're going to multiply this to the whole equation. Okay. And after that, we're going to have an expression and then solve for um, A by um, looking at its equivalent um, constants or, or expressions. So multiplying this, x minus 1 and x squared plus 4 to the whole equation will give us 7x squared plus 13x equals a, and then uh, if we multiply this, x minus 1, x minus 1 cancels out, we're left with x squared plus 4, x squared plus 4, plus we have bx plus c, multiplied by x squared plus 4, uh, times uh, 1 over x squared plus 4, x minus 1 will be left. So, x minus 1. Right. What do we do next? We can distribute this no, to have ax squared plus 4a plus bx. We can distribute it here as well as here bx minus bx squared minus bx and then of course c we have um, I, sorry yeah we have um, The struggle is real. We have bx, okay, plus cx minus c. Yeah, all right. Okay. So, what do we do next? We simply have to pair and look at the different um, equivalent expressions of uh, our um, left-hand side here. For example, if we have 7x squared here, we must look at all the x squareds, all the x's, and all the constants, and pair it up with um, the equivalent expression here. So let's do that. Let's put 7 So let, let's for, uh, let's indicate for x squared, no? Putting all our expressions of x squared here. Meron tayo 7 x squared equals ito, di ba? Meron siyang x squared. No? This as well, meron x squared. So, lagay natin dito sila. We have ax squared. I'm sorry, yeah. Plus bx squared. x squared can actually be eliminated and we have 7 equals a plus b. Okay, let's call this equation 1. Okay, now for x naman, we can have here this expression, so 13x uh, we also have so bx and then cx. Okay. So, putting them here, meron tayong 13x equals bx or negative bx minus or plus cx. Yeah, excess can be cancelled here. So we have 13 equals 
negative b plus c. Let's call this equation 2. Okay. Now for the constant. For the constant. Obviously, we have constant tito. No? So that would be equal to 0. So this would be 0. In constant natin. Pero paano kung may plus 3 dito, sir? E di yung plus 3 or yung 3, yun yung ating magiging constant equivalent dito. And then, we have to look at our different constants lang na meron dito. Ibig sabihin, yung walang x and walang x squared, we have here 4a and we have c as well. Okay. So, meron tayong 4a and negative c. So, let's call this equation 3. Okay. Yeah. So, we have three equations and we have three unknowns. Yung ating A, B, and C. Okay. So, for this case, we can actually rearrange this, no? Yung equation 1, 2, and 3. And group it here, no? And you will notice that this is a system of equations. We have equation 1. We have 7 equals a plus b. We have here um, 13 equals negative b plus c. Finally, we have 0 equals 4a minus c. Now, in arrange ko siya ng ganyan so that you can see that this can also be expressed as determinants. There are many ways to compute for a, b, and c algebraically. You can do substitution. Let's say, for example, you can solve for a here. For a would be equal to c and then substitute it afterwards. There are many techniques you know, that you can use. But what I'm going to teach you is a technique that can that you can use no, when you, um, that will be useful for you when you uh, uh, do your board exams. And uh, will make as well your, um, what do you call this? Computation easier. Kasi pwede naman natin gamitin siya. Pwede naman tayo gumamit ng ating calculators for our computations. Okay? So, let's do that. Let's use our calculator here. Yeah. Okay. So, as you can notice, meron tayong um, three equations and three unknowns. Sa ating calculator, we can actually compute for that. Okay? Simply go to uh, mode and go to mode and then go to 5 and then go to 2 no. because this equation has three unknowns x, y, z that will be computed in our case, yun yung magiging a, b, c natin please do take note of the form of the equation in this case kasi we have here all, uh, all the variables on one side and, and the constant on the other side so a plus b plus c a sub x, uh, no, a of ax plus by plus cz is equal to the constant t sub n, okay? So, interestingly, we have already set it up in such a form, which is, ito yung constant natin. This is our constant. This is our um, x's, and this is our y's, and this is our z's. So in other words, we will just be inputting the values on the calculator and then boom, meron na tayong value. Let's do that. Let's go to 2. And then as you can see, meron tayong determinants dito. Uh, rather, a matrix that has labels A, B, C, D. Okay? This represents yung ating 7 or uh, A, B, C here as well. So ang kailangan lang natin i-input yung coefficients niya. So let's do that. For the first equation, we have A, B, so, 1, 1, and then 0, and then 7. 
Zero kasi wala siyang coefficient. It's absent from the equation. So, 1. 1. 0. And then yung constant, 7. Next, we have, we have here no a. So, that would be 0. We have here um, negative 1. We have as well um, 1 for c. And then finally, your constant is 13. Yon. The last, of course, is would be 4, 0, negative 1, and then 0. So, click lang natin equal. Yon. Magkakaroon na tayo ng answer. And that is A. We have A is equal to 4. Yeah. What else? We have B is equal to 3. And finally, C is equal to 13. Yeah. Okay, C is equal to 13. Now that we have these co coefficients, hindi pa tayo nagtatapos dito sapagkat atin naman siyang isa-substitute back where? Back here in our equation. So substituting A, B, and C here will give us a decomposed fraction. And a decomposed fraction will now give us the ability to integrate A. Yon. So let's do that, okay? So kotihin ko to. And then, dito ka na siya ilalagay, ha? Yeah. So, we have this expression. We have already mentioned that A, B, and C is 4, 3, and 13. Okay. All right. So, is it going to turn out in So substituting it back now will give us Oops. will now give us <laughs> sorry sa andami commercial no? um, 4 all over x minus 1 plus 3x plus 13. So, yun yung substituted values natin, okay? Of course, over x squared plus 4. Okay? So, we can finally integrate this to and we're going to have 4 dx four dx 
over x minus 1. Okay. Plus, how about this function? We have here 3x plus 13 over x squared plus 4. Okay. 13 ba? Mali, hindi pala 13. 16 pala. Ito pala yung 13. <laughs> this should be 16, sorry. Okay, palita natin. So I stand corrected by myself. Ito yung medyo hirap pagka recorded. This should be 16. Puti na lang, I noticed. Yan. So 3x plus 16 over x squared plus 4. Now, um, how do we integrate this? If we're going to look at it, no, um, we cannot again do u du here because u, if u is, if we let u is, uh, if we let u to be x squared plus four, we're going to have two x, two x plus zero. So we let time two x, three x plus sixteen times. So that is not possible. We can look at, again, partial fraction decomposition. We can dis decompose this. We can do IBP. And also, we can do this by separating 3x plus 16, having the same denominator. Okay. In other words, we're going to have 3 no, um, x squared plus 4. all over x squared plus 4 dx. And of course, yung ating um, 16 here, okay lang, lagay ko dito. 16, figure it off. Um, dx, I'm sorry, meron pa lang x dito, x dx going to have 16 dx all over x squared plus 4. Yeah. So, integrating now, magkakaroon tayo dito ng 4. This is um, 4. We let you, no? Um, ayan, sige. Isa-isa natin, okay? So, we have this one. Siguro move ko na lang to dito, no? Para mas madaling makita. Ayan. Let's move ko to dito. Ayan. Okay. Ayan. Alright. Kasi, I want to demonstrate that this function here actually be equal to um, be integrated no by using u du substitution so we have if we let u be equal to x minus 1 this will give us du to be what dx right how about this one we can u we can do u du again here and we're going to have u equivalent to x squared plus 4 and du equal to 2x dx, right? 2x dx. And finally here, what can we do about this one? No. So we have x squared plus 4. If we do u du substitution here, kailangan din natin uli ng 2x dx. But unfortunately, we don't have that in our numerator. What else could we look into? Ah, another application here or another technique that we could use is trigonometric um, identity or substitution. Recall that
that the integral of um, du over u squared plus a squared is actually equivalent to 1 over a inverse tangent u over a. Okay. Yeah. So, we're going to apply this identity here. We can actually see that u here is the x squared, and a here, or u squared here in this expression, this u squared is this x squared, and this a squared is this 4. Since we need u and a only, we could have actually um, u to be x only, square root nito, both sides, no? and a to be 2. Yeah. So in other words, um, you can simply substitute those values and then get this identity. So let's do all of this, expanding it all together, combining. We have, we're going to have 4, and then integral of du over u plus 3, integral of du over u, but we have here 2, no? So we need to insert, we need to insert 1 half to make it Anyway, so we need to insert uh, 2 here to make it 1. Recall that the x is the x is equivalent to um, du over 2x. Since meron kang x dito, ah, since meron kang x na dito, uh, here's the numerator. No? So this will become du na lang, no? over 2x. So du over u plus yan, integral neto, which is um, 1 over a inverse tangent. So in apply na natin yung in integrate natin, no? u over a equivalent niya. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 4 d over u is ln u, right? ln This will give us 4 ln u plus 1.5 ln u plus 1 over a, but a is 2, plus inverse tangent u over a, which is x over 2. Yeah. So expanding further, we're going to have 4 ln, ano yung u natin dito? x minus 1, and then this one, x squared plus 4. So, u, x minus 1. Plus 1.5. Ln, x squared plus 4. Okay, and then finally, we have 1 half inverse tangent x over 2. Saya, di ba? Ang saya-saya. Obviously, this is actually y here. So, since we already have an explicit solution, of course, not forgetting our magical C. Yeah. In this case, meron na tayong um, 
solution, an explicit one. This can be further simplified, pero this can be already accepted. For example, 4 here could be raised here. So x minus 1 raised to 4. 1.5 here as well can be raised here by uh, logarithm powers, no? properties. So x squared plus 4 raised to 1.5. And then, of course, 1 half inverse tangent x over 2 plus c. So, you know. Right, so this is our final answer. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, medyo mahaba lang yung solution, but I'm giving you these tough examples for you already to um, experience no? some complex problems. Kasi in some books, medyo maldali lang examples nila. And in some lectures, you may see in other, um, you, in other uh, perhaps, YouTube creators or YouTube teachers, which are all, uh, all, also very good and always great, or and are great. But um, I find some of them not that complex. So this is what makes our lecture here um, different from what you will uh, see on other tutorials. Some of my examples are really... Um, Kind of tough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's proceed with another example. No. Um, let's go to example number three. Yeah. We have now a trigonometric. Um, sorry. We have now a trigonometric um, example. Okay. We, have, we are asked to solve the equation x cosine squared y dx plus tangent y dy. How do we solve this one? Okay. Okay, so solving this will give us solution. So, x cosine squared y dy plus tangent y dy is equal to 0. So, una, of course, our first step would be to separate. Yeah, separate. So separating, making all the x's on one side and all the y's on the other, we're going to have um, tangent y dy equals x or negative x cosine squared y dx. Okay, we can transfer cosine squared y here by dividing it on both sides. Hence, we're going to have tangent y all over cosine cosine squared y equals negative x dx. Okay. Now, the next step is, of course, that we integrate. So, integrate. So, integrating both sides, we're going to have tangent y over cosine squared y equal to negative x dx. Okay. So what then is our next step? The next step would be to figure out no, this integration here. 
Kasi ito medyo madali lang tong right hand side, no? X squared over 2 lang to. But how about this one? Tangent y, cosine squared y. Cosine squared y. Okay. There are actually two ways to solve this, no? And the first way is by letting u be equal to tangent y. And letting du be equal to cosine squared y, which is also equivalent to secant squared y. No. Oops. Wait lang. Nagyay muna natin. Because this is also equivalent to secant squared y, right? Um, integral of tangent y is also equivalent to secant squared y. Recall that. Recall that 1 over cosine is also secant. So if we let u be equal to tangent y, du kasi is secant squared y. Naalala pa? Yung ating derivative. Yun. So if we let that happen, no, it would be easily seen that um, this will become u du by u du substitution. U du and that would be simply u squared over 2 and finally yung ating tangent y secant squared y is equivalent to tangent squared over 2 tama so ganun siya kadali right another way of doing the, of uh, solving this is actually by choosing u, no? And that is uh, the other u. u being secant. Recall that du is um, secant tangent, no? Because if you multiply this together, u du, then we're going to have secant squared tangent y, right? So here's an alternative answer. So if we do it like this, of course, u du will give us again u squared over 2. Then this will give us what? Secant squared y Over 2. Paano yun? No? Kasi we have two answers here. We have this answer and this answer. No? Alin ang tama sa kanilang dalawa? Actually, both of them are correct. No? Both of them are correct. How so? Recall that from trigo. No? From trigo. Recall that from trigo, we have actually sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. If I divide this by cosine squared theta, in both sides natin, we can get another expression. Actually, that's what I do. Uh, I'm not a good memorizer, so what I do is I just remember one identity and then derive the rest. So if I divide this whole identity by cosine squared, I'm going. Uh, I'll be having tangent squared theta plus one is equal to one over secant squared theta. I'm sorry, secant squared theta na pala derecho na <laughs> secant squared theta. And what can we notice here? Tangent 
square theta and secant square theta are actually almost the same with only one here as their difference. At yung one ito, na ito, is actually yung ating plus C. Yun. Yung ating C ay one in this case. In other words, to summarize, no? Um, tangent squared y, whether you choose this one or you choose this one, both will give you the same answer. Okay? So, what does this mean? This means that the bulk of the grading or the marking or the checking of your answers will be on me. <laughs> so, kailangan kong checkan maigi yung papers nyo. Kasi, if uh, you encounter these cases, then I have to see to check uh, different answers that are both correct. Pagka ganito yung situation. Okay? So, uh, sa prof yun. Sa prof yun. So, in other words, um, having this all settled, we can now proceed by integrating here um, both sides. No? And we're going to have Um, yun na nga, u du, u be equal to tangent y, and du equal to secant squared y. This will give us um, tangent squared y over 2 equals negative x squared over 2 plus C. Okay. So we can rearrange this one and give us tangent squared y plus x squared over 2 plus or equals to C. So multiplying by yeah. Over to the battle. Yeah, we got. Oops. So multiplying by two, it'll actually give us um, two to the whole equation. No, we multiply two. Gakaron tayo ng simple tangent squared y plus x squared is equal to two c or simply c. Okay. Saying again, we're representing here family of curves or the family of solutions for this answer. Yeah, okay. So that's the answer. Pero sir, ito ba sir? Answer din ba to? Well, yes. Pwede mo nang baksan yan at yan yung maging answer. But for convenience sake, pwede natin i-multiply yung 2 para mas madali siyang i-express. Okay. Nagay ko na lang din dito para maliwanag, no? Where C here? 2C. Yan. Represented as 1. Okay. Let's now move on to another example. Example number four. So we have here um, dy over dx. Yeah, we have here dy over dx. Um, 6x raised to 5 minus 2x plus 1 over cosine y plus e raised to 5. We're asked again to solve for the solution. Or to look for the solution. Solve for the solution. So solution. Okay, first step is separate. Okay. Separate all the x's and all the y's. Very simple. Magkakaroon tayo ng cosine y 
plus e to the y dy of course equals 6x raised to 5 minus 2x plus 1 all over Oh, wala, wala pala siyang all over. <laughs> Sorry. Dx. Yan. Okay. So, cosine y. E to the y. And 6x squared minus 2x plus 1 dx. Next step is, of course, to integrate. Okay, so integrating, we're going to have cosine y dy plus e to the y dy equals 6x5 dx minus 2x dx plus dx okay number three yeah so oh yeah all right so integrating on this side makakaroon tayo ng very simple no madali lang we have sine y Plus e u d u is e to the u equals six x raised to five over six. So that's that gives us x raised to six minus two x squared over two is x squared. No plus x plus c. Yeah. So, in this case, we cannot uh, express this anymore in um, y kasi because of sine y and e raised to y. But we can express this simply as, um, as is or as um, explicitly wherein yung ating constant nasa other side. In other words, we can express this as sine y. But, sir, correct na po ba to? Yes, pwede na to. No, pwede na to. But for convenience, we can put it this way. Minus x raised to 6. Yun, so, okay naman pala. E raised to y minus x raised to 6 plus, oops, um, x squared. I know, minus pala, kasi, ah yes, plus, <laughs> sorry, kasi we have transposes already to the other side, minus x. Minus x and then what's to see? Yeah. All right. So this is our answer. Our final answer. But in this example, at this point, no, uh, we are we have actually reached an impasse. 
uh, we would while we would want to express this in terms of y but simply we cannot because y here is an angle and then e here is a power and we cannot separate yung y to form an implicit or rather explicit solution in terms of y so consequently when we say solve the equation we must on occasion be content if only an implicit form of the solution has been found in this case ito na yun. if we cannot express it explicitly and then the eddy express natin siya implicitly so case to case basis okay yeah. let's take a look at another problem yeah So, um, we have R D theta over dr is equal to theta squared plus 1. We can solve this. Again, by first separating the variables, separate. And then integrate later on. So by separating the variables, we're going to have d theta all over theta squared plus 1 equals r d R. So, medyo madali lang to. As long as you know the identity. So, the next step, of course, is to integrate. And by integrating, we integrate d theta all over theta squared plus 1 equals r d r. Okay. So, further expanding or integrating, we call again. Maalala natin last, uh, in our last example that this d theta over squared theta squared plus 1 is actually a form of um, du all over u squared plus a squared, right? Which has an equivalent of inverse tangent or rather 1 over a inverse tangent negative 1 u over a. So, in this case, theta squared is our u. And our a is 1. a squared is 1. So, getting their square root, magkakaroon tayo ng u is equal to theta. And of course, a is equal to 1. Okay, having known that, we can now integrate this part and we're going to have um, 1 over tangent, 1 over uh, a, which is simply 1, no, inverse tangent, inverse tangent, u over a, which is theta, over again one no. equals integral ng r dr which is r squared over two plus c plus c ah mali. <laughs> sorry mali pala this should not be r dr Rather, dr over r. My apologies. My apologies. This should be dr over r. Yeah. So this should be ln r. ln r. And then, of course, plus c. Kasi du over u, right? du over u. In other words, meron tayong tangent 
theta equals ln r plus c. We can um, simplify this further. You can actually express this no, um, for convenience. No? C could also be equal to ln C. So ln R plus ln C. No. This now becomes ln R C. Right? Yeah. L and R C. Now if we have inverse tangent theta, we can express this as we can both raise this to E, no? This whole equation here. And magkakaroon tayo ng e raised to inverse tangent theta equals r c. Or simply, e raised to tangent theta over r is equal to c. Yeah. So this is an explicit or implicit no um, expression of our answer. We have E raised to uh, tangent inverse tangent theta is equal to R over R is equal to C. Okay. Again, yung C here uh, represents a family of solutions. Eh? So it could also be equal to ln uh, ln of C no? or ln C. Now, by property of uh, logarithms, our natural log, you can actually multiply this, ln rc, and then if raised to e, e raised to tangent theta, and then e raised to ln is, of course, rc na lang. Yeah. So we have this answer here. Okay. So let's move on to another um, example, which would be our last example. Yeah. Okay, so we have here e raised to 2y minus y cosine x dy over dx equal to e raised to y sine 2x. We're now given uh, an IVP, no? This is an IVP initial value problem because meron na tayong initial value condition. Sabi dito, y of 0 is equal to 0. y at 0 is equal to 0. In other words, when x is equal to 0, our y is equal to 0. Saan natin ito gagamitin? Mamaya, pag nakuha na natin yung general solution, i-apply natin to para makuha natin yung particular solution. Okay, let's try and solve. So, first step is to separate. Separating um, x and y's, meron tayong e to the 2y minus y dy. Okay. e to the 2y minus y over e to the y dy yeah so all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other we have sine to x
cosine x and then dx here. After separating the variables, we can now proceed to integrating them. So in integrating them, we can um, solve, of course, for y, which is our goal. e to the y, dy, integral of sine 2x, cosine x, dx. Yeah. This is y, hindi u. Okay. So we can simplify this side here. Uh, EY, uh, since common sila ng denominator, e to the 2y over EY will give us e do y na lang. 2 minus 1 is 1. So power yun. And we're gonna have negative y e to the negative y. So binaba ko lang siya, yung expression niya. And this one, minus ko, kasi e to the 2y over e to the y. Ay, ko kasi e to the 2y over e to the y is simply just e to the 2y minus y equals to e to the y. Yeah, and hence, ito. Okay? Yun. So, Okay, continuing, simplify, simplify lang natin sila kanina. Of course, dy here equals um, sine 2x cosine x dx. Now, let's take a look at these two integrals. Okay? This first one. E to the y minus e y e to the negative y. Yung una madali lang, no? Kasi, if you distribute this, e to the y is simply dy. But how about this next term? y e to the negative y dy. This can actually be solved by means of integration by parts. So, we can choose for u and dv. Recall that in integration by parts, we have u du, u dv rather, u dv is equal to u v minus v du. Yan. Okay. Now, the problem here or uh, pertain an issue that must be settled here that causes a lot of confusion would be the choosing of u and the choosing of dv. In choosing u, we must prioritize what we call ito, liate. Ito yung uh, tandaan nyo, acrostic natin for in choosing u. What, what is l? l is logarithm, i is inverse trigonometric, a is algebraic, T is trigonometric, and then last is yung ating exponential. So, ito yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng priority. Pag meron kang function wherein logarithm, there is a logarithm there, yun yung unahin mong gawing U. Okay? Pag walang logarithm, next is inverse trigon trigonometric, and then algebraic trigonometric, and then yung last, yung least priority natin for U is yung exponential. In this case, it is clearly uh, seen no, that we have an algebraic and an exponential function. So obviously, uh, having uh, understood that in choosing u, the priority must be li8, and since a algebraic is y, so we must choose u to be y, and then dv to be e to the y dy. So let's do that. Okay. So, okay, e to the u, or rather, let u let u be equal to uh, 
y and let dv be equal to e to the negative y dy. Let's further expand. Kakaroon tayo ng du to be dy and v by integrating this no, will be eu du negative e to the negative y. Okay. Now that we have u dv all uh, our components ang ating mga sangkap for this integration by parts, then let's substitute it. We have u dv equal to uv minus vdu. In this case, we have uv. So we have y minus or y times pala. So this will be negative y e to the negative y minus the integral of vdu, which is vdu. So this will become minus negative e to the negative y multiplied by dy. Further expanding, we have negative y e to the negative y plus integral of e to the negative y dy. Okay, but we know that the integral of e to the negative y dy is simply negative y e to the negative y is simply negative e to the y. Yeah. So in other words, we have negative y e to the negative y minus e to the negative y. Or simply, we can factor out e raised to negative y and we have negative 1 minus 1. Or negative y minus 1. Or mamaya na lang. Okay, huwag na yan. Kaya amro natin yan. Diyan. Balikan natin yung ating um, integral. Yeah, dito. So, this one has been expanded here. Let's uh, try and copy this. Put it here for convenience. This will give us e to the y, simply e to the y minus, I'm sorry, ito pala. Ito na lang yung isa. This will give us ito pala natin ang gagawa itong kabila. This will give us e to the y minus and then itong ating sagot equals, meron pa para tayo hindi na-integrate dito. We have sine 2x cosine x dx. How about this one? How do we integrate this one? Recall that sine 2x is also equivalent to 2 sine x cosine x. Diba? Double angle formula. Alala pa. So, 
magkakaroon tayo ng Mali. Dapat pala yung cosine x here. <laughs> I'm sorry! Should be the denominator. My God. Cosine x. Dx. Yeah. I'm really struggling in using this stuff. But please bear with me for a moment. So, dapat ito ay sin, sin 2x over cosine x dx. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 2 sine x cosine x all over cosine x. Ayan. Okay na. So, cosine x cancer cancels here. No. And we have 2 sine x which is equivalent to Two negative cosine x. So in other words, bringing this all up, will give us e the y plus y e to the negative y plus e to the negative y equals negative negative 2 cosine x yeah. Oops, what I do? All right. Now, hindi pa tayo tapos dito because what we only have is actually the general solution. Okay, the general solution. What we're looking for is the particular solution because we are given what? We are given an initial value condition. Ito yan. No. Y at 0 is equal to 0. In other words, when x is equal to 0, then y is equal to 0. So let's apply that, no? When y of 0 is equal to 0, then makakakuha tayo ng ito daw is x when x is equal to 0, okay? y is equal to 0. In other words, we have e raised to 0 plus 0 e raised to negative 0 plus e raised to negative 0 equals negative 2 cosine and then 0. Okay. So in this case, magkakaroon tayo ng e raised to 0 is 1 plus 0 times e raised to 1. This is 1 as well, diba? 1. And then this is 1 as well. But 1 times 0 is 0. 
plus 1 is equal to negative 2 cosine 0 is actually 1. Yeah. So we have plus C. Okay, nalimutan natin. Kasi we're, act we're actually solving for C. So nakalimutan yung plus C. Yeah. Plus C. Okay. So we have 1 plus 1 is 2. Plus 2 is 4. 4 is actually our C. Okay. Now having that, Okay. Having that C, we can now solve for the general solution, or rather the particular solution. And we're going to have um, E raised to Y plus, we can factor out E raised to negative Y, E raised to negative Y, and we have Y plus 1 equals negative 2 cosine x plus 4. And so simplifying further, we can actually express this as explicitly as e raised to y plus e raised to negative y, y plus 1 plus 2 cosine x is equal to 4. That's another way of expressing this one. Yeah. All right, so there we have it. This is our um, final example. E raised to y plus e raised to negative y, y plus 1 plus 2 cosine x is equal to 4. Okay. So, for our problem set, this is our problem set 3. Um, this will be posted in school book. And submitted through uh, in school book and or in grade school. This is also indicated in your printed modules. Okay, so that ends my presentation. Thank you again for tuning in, and uh, my apologies to some of the uh, mistakes that I made earlier on. Thank you very much for tuning in and for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two. Let us pray the Lasalle in prayer. I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of the Saint John Baptist de La Salle. Pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye, guys.